Hey, everybody. Let's see who's here today. We'll give everyone a second to uh, join in here, make sure that everyone's ready to hang out with I Don't Mind. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope you're all well. Let's see if we're good. Can you guys hear me? Are we good? See some people joining. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Wood. For those of you who don't know, I am uh, the founder of I Don't Mind, and I'm so happy to spend this afternoon with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a special guest joining us this afternoon um, from the Crisis Text Line. We are very excited to talk to Nancy Lublin, who's the CEO and founder. Um, so we'll do that here in a moment. But first, I want to thank you all so much for joining us uh, to celebrate Mental Health Month. It's been super engaging and exciting. And in spite of everything that's going on in the world right now, seeing you guys sending love to each other and uh, interacting and just checking in, it's, it's been inspiring and encouraging. Um, it helped me personally to also see you know, other people making time to take care of themselves. And uh, so thank you for being loud on social as well. And there are ways to, to keep checking in with your loved ones. You can use our questions that we put together. Um, we have other resources at, at idontmind.com. And also we're still working with Mental Health America um, to try to achieve our 1 million screens in May goal. Uh, so go to idontmind.com slash screen where you can take a mental health screen and uh, it can kind of help you track where you are and where you've been if you do them over time. Um, and it can be super helpful too in, uh, you know, if you feel like something's off, but you're not sure it's a great way to kind of just even taking the, the, the questions bit by bit, it kind of helps you reflect, um, and be honest with yourself. So it's a great way to do that. So check that out and do that. Um, and you can also still shop our mental health month collection, which will end on May 31st. Um, so shop to support. We still need your help right now more than ever. So, uh, Get in there. All right, so today we are so excited to be talking to the Crisis Text Line, and we're gonna talk um, about when to ask for help and how to do that. Uh, for, those of you who, for those of you who don't know, the uh, text line is a service that exists for people to sort of reach out to someone anonymously and confidentially and help you navigate from a hot moment, as they say, to a cool moment. Um, and the way that they do that is through using um, their entirely volunteer-based uh, crisis counselor service. And these are all people, you know, like you and I, who sign up for the service, train, and then join the platform, uh, which launched back in 2013, um, and help people sort of navigate those moments of crisis. Uh, so we're going to be talking with Nancy. We're so excited to have her today. Um, there are resources that exist for when you feel like there's no one to talk to, and I know sometimes it feels like you can't open up to your family or that you don't think there's someone that you can go to who's really going to understand where you're coming from. I know when I'm having a bad day, I, even though I work on I Don't Mind, I started this thing and I, I'll, I'll sit down and you know be weighed down by the world and by uh, the circumstances we're in, for example, and it feels like it's never going to end and I feel like it's not worth speaking up or talking to someone, but it is worth it. And even when you feel like you don't have someone that you can confide in, there are services like the Crisis Text Line that exist um, to help you to be a real ear to lend you um, and can connect you with other resources uh, and tools and ideas to get you out of your head and, and back into recovery um, and on your feet. So with that, we are going to look here, bear with me. We are going to guest on. Um, this is Nancy Lublin, who, as I mentioned, is the CEO and founder of the Crisis Text Line. Um, and we're so excited that she's going to join us today. I know I look like Nancy, but I actually I look like Billie Eilish's grandma right now, don't I? <laughs> 
actually, <laughs> we, but I'm we not. Can't, we can't see you yet, Nancy, but I can't wait. That's going to be a great reveal. Oh, yeah. When you see my roots, you'll know what I'm talking about. I can see you. I don't know why you can't see me, but I do. I look like Billie Eilish's grandma, so there you go, but I'm not. We're not at all related that I know of. Yeah. That's so funny. Let's let's give this a second. I'm not sure why it's not a... Can you guys see Nancy? I, uh, can anybody, can you see me in my roots? Can you see my, <laughs> my white roots? I see, I can see you. There you go. About my roots. That's okay. Really well, we're going to pretend like. <laughs> they said they can see your roots. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, all right. Well, Nancy, I wish I could see your face. Um, Hang on one second. Let's see if we can. Look at that. Oh, we, we lost just you now. Again. Is that better? Is that better? I'm back. Is that better? And my camera turned around. This is going great so far. <laughs> <laughs> we see it. Okay, they say they see me. Now they Hi, can. Nancy. There you go. Hi. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I don't know what you're talking about with your roots. They're absolutely fine. You think, really? I mean, my hair, my hair. This is this is a great look here, but it's it's, good. it's grown like I think three inches since this all started. I think that's kind of the name of the quarantine game, right? Weird hair yeah, things this is happening. Like three inches of terrible roots. Uh huh. I think it looks great. At home hair color and <laughs> whatever. There are that just things. means that you're abiding by the rules. I am. <laughs> Proof. There you go. Proof. <laughs> Proof. Yeah. It's yeah. Anyway, proof. How how is everything going for you in this totally bizarre time? Um, it is totally bizarre. Okay, yeah. I'm here with my family. I've got teenagers, um, and um, and actually my sister and her husband and kids have have joined us. So we've like merged our quarantining this week. Um, I'd say on a personal note, it's okay. Sometimes one of the effective ways to say like, how's everybody doing is to say, how are you doing on a scale of one to five, especially for people who aren't used to talking about their, their feelings, like to give them a specific range. And yeah. I would say on a personal note, I'm like a 4.5 or a five. But when I think of my uh, beloved New York city, I'm probably a three. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, at least that's candid. How about you? How are you doing? It's, it's good to be honest with ourselves, isn't it? About How when are you things on aren't one, great. On a, it, it is good to be honest with How are on you a on one, one to ten? five today? Yeah, one, one to five. five today. Yeah. I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably around a three. Wow, yeah. And not, and not in a bad way, but in a, um, it, it's hard to not feel slightly overwhelmed by the stuckness of the situation. We're seeing that in our data. It's just, it is I overwhelming. Bet. It's so big. It's so unpredictable. One of the things we're seeing that works well is to shrink it into mm. a time chunk that's that you can manage. So instead of thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do this summer? Or what's gonna happen for the rest of the year or to my career or to my family? Just think, mm -hmm. um, what are you gonna do tonight? Like, how are you gonna stay strong tomorrow? What are you gonna do on Saturday? You know, like yeah. just really short time periods because otherwise it is, it's just too big, it's too big. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that's such helpful advice for even when we're not under quarantine, right? That's Focus on the time. present and what you can do right in this minute to feel better instead of thinking, you know, what am I going to feel in two weeks or two months? Yep. Um, I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you. I love the crisis text line. We, oh, at I don't mind are big fans of what you guys do. Um, can you bring us back to how this all started? Where did you get this idea? Sure. Yeah, no, I was the CEO of a different organization of, um, of do something .org, mm -hmm. which is um, the biggest organization for for young people. It's about 6 million members. Um, and it's all by text. And it's all great stuff that people can do to make the world better. It's all about volunteerism. And we started getting text messages from people in pain, from kids saying they're being bullied at school, or, um, you know, that they had a fight with their best friend, what should they do mm -hmm. about it. And, um, we would triage like, oh, you know, um, here's another website or talk to your school principal or your mom. And then we got a really dark message. How dark can I get here, Chris? Can I? You can get I, as dark. We like, we like we'll making things candid. 
Okay, so we'll go there. So the message literally said, he won't stop raping me. It's my dad. He told me not to tell anyone. And the letters R-U-T, which means, are you there? Um, I mean, I remember it was just a regular day in August and one of our employees just came in. She had printed it out and put it on my desk and was like, I don't know what to do with this one. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my God, how, how, like how alone and desperate and how bad a place do you have to be in to, to, to send that to an organization like this randomly. Yeah. So yeah. we sent back the phone number for um, a rape and incest organization. And I came in the next day and said like, what happened? We sent it again, never heard back. And the truth is we have never heard back. Do something has never heard back from that person in nine years. Wow. And I've personally tried to take that phone number and call and text multiple times. And, um, Look, I don't know if it was uh, a burner phone, like a temporary phone. I don't know if her dad saw it. I don't know if she's dead or alive. And actually, I saw here in the comments, someone said, I feel so sorry for her, him. And it's true. I, I always use a female pronoun. And I don't know if that person was female identified. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was clear, though, that people wanted to share by text. And so there needed to be, um, there needed to be, um, yeah, put a trigger warning on this is a good suggestion also. I did mm -hmm. say, like, how dark can I get? So anyway, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, and so we started a hotline by text. And, wow. um, and we launched it, and um, very quietly, frankly, in just Chicago and El Paso. And within four months, we were in all 295 area codes in the United States because people really wanted to share. They wanted an outlet. They wanted a place that they could talk to that would understand their yeah. pain that was by text, that you didn't have to use words and no one would see your face and no one would hear your voice. There was no judgment. And so it's really effective by text. Wow. Yeah. There's something about the anonymity, uh, being able to say whatever you need to say without needing to feel responsible in some way for the words. It, it, it can be dangerous in, in the wrong spaces, but in terms of help and, and reaching out, even some therapy sources that use the text-based service, I feel like there's a nice comfort to not having someone looking at you. And it can feel less personal, but at the same time, more personal. There's something so remarkable Safe, about that. More anonymous. Yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, no, I think, I think it's with, well, we've demonstrated that it's hugely effective this way. Yeah. And the, yeah. And as the curly so, bee just pointed out, yes, in Canada as well. So yes, seven, in four one, seven for one in the U S but also, yeah, the curly bee just said this, um, and seven, four, one, seven, four, one in Canada also. So, um, can help you in both places. An easy number to remember. Yep. So how does it, how does it work? Let's say I'm, I'm having one of those days, uh, where I'm feeling down and low and can't get out of bed and I decide to text you guys, walk me through what that looks like. Yeah, what's great is it's not an app, you know, it, and there's no like survey, it's free. You're just um, lighting up, you're just lighting up my text messages. I, exactly right. Just like a no, friend. You, you reach out to us. So basically <laughs> you text, you text 741741. You can do it right now. It, it makes a line up the left side of your phone. And the first thing you'll get back is a link to our terms of service and privacy policy mm -hmm. so that you, you know what's, and then the second thing is what's your crisis? Like, let's just yeah. get right into it. What's going on? And you're going to be chatting um, with an empathetic trained person on the other side. The first thing that happens is there's actually an algorithm that looks at all the messages and ranks you in the queue to make sure that we take the high risk people first. Wow. Um, I'll tell you, like right now, we have so much capacity. Everybody's being taken really quickly. So if you're in pain, you really should just, you should text 741741. You are not alone. Like, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we got you. And, um, and then there's, again, a crisis counselor. And these are, these are the best people. I mean, they're, they're volunteers who have applied and gone through a background check and about a 30 hour training. And I'll just tell you, it's, and, and it's hard help to people. pass the training. They want to help Yeah, I've heard. Doing this. Hey, yeah, there's only a 33% pass rate. Like it's easier to get into college in America <laughs> or like most universities wow. than it is to become one of our crisis counselors. They're amazing people. And then, and then they'll help you. And then we have paid full-time staff who are also watching the conversations. And if mm -hmm. something goes really badly, they'll step in. Right. Um, like if someone's really um, at risk, but no, it's totally free and it's 24 seven. So when you, you said it's before, free, it's free. Oh no, it's totally that's free. That's important for people to know, I think. <laughs> And that's an amazing thing. It is. Because therapy a fantastic can be really service. expensive. Oh, and yeah. You should do therapy. We believe in therapy. 
We believe in so you, doctors. So you're not, you're not a patients. replacement for that. We are not a replacement. In fact, often we're a gateway to it, that mm. you'll try us. Maybe it's the first time you ever share that you're feeling panic attacks, or it's the first time you share that you have a crush on your best friend who's the same gender as you, or it's the first time that you share, I don't know, and, uh, and you're like, you know what? This was actually pretty good. It felt good to share. And I yeah. wasn't judged and they were supportive. And so maybe this is a stepping stone to now you finding a therapist who you can work with regularly. Yeah. Now that, that's interesting too. The, the couple examples you just gave of moments to ask for help. I think that's something that maybe we sort of misunderstand sometimes is the actual meaning of crisis yes. because a crisis, some, I, I feel like at least for me, you sort of think of it as this big negative, massive, like level 10 event but a crisis is really i mean i even looked up the, de the definition <laughs> looking at this and there was one that i particularly like um, an emotionally significant event or radical change of status in a person's life and i like that because it doesn't just leave you with you know the negative part of it it leads you focused towards like the turning point yep. right it can be the moment when you switch from being weighed down from something to looking ahead at something that lifts you up Nice. Um, so what, what, what does a crisis mean to you? What qualifies? We always say if it's a crisis to you, it's a crisis to us. So sometimes it is like that crush That's that great. you don't know what to do with, you can't explain, or it's, um, it's an argument you just had with your mother and you're so pissed and you just, you don't know what to do with that anger. Um, or... So you, you mean instead of like throwing my toy across the room or like knocking my laptop off? I have toys. I don't throw them. Though. I'm nice to my toys. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that kind of stuff. It's um. But it can be anything, right? It could be anything. And what's great about text is you you nailed it actually in your definition that it's in that moment. If by phone or in person, you have to wait for a quiet place. Mm. You have to make an appointment to till someone's available. Right. right. By text, maybe we're with you in the bathroom when you're about to swallow a pill or throw up or cut. Or, um, or we're with you in that meeting um, while you're in that Zoom meeting and you're so pissed and your phone is next to you or at that family dinner table and they're just, they're making you nuts. Yeah. We're there with you because your phone is right there. And so maybe everybody around you thinks you're texting your best friend um, and actually you're texting us. So we can be with you in the heat of the moment. The word today shows up six times more for us than any other time reference like last week or, 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 or on Tuesday or whatever. Um, and so we can really get people in that crisis moment, which means yeah. we can help tip you to a healthy decision. So instead wow. of taking that pill or throwing your cell phone or, or um, doing something that maybe you'll regret later, mm -hmm. maybe that creates permanent harm, um, we can tip you to, like you said, a cool calm and a healthy choice. Yeah, I think, I mean, you think even just as a child in your moments of anger or frustration of not getting something, we, we tend to react in those moments when we're, we're not at our best capacity to make nice, calculated, wise, thought out decisions. We just kind of do, do it. Yep. And as adults, we still have that in our brains and our, our, our likelihood of making the wrong decision when we're heated is so oh, much higher. So high. Totally. So, I, I mean, you, you guys always, working we people down. Wish we had like a little guardian angel that we could just check in with. And that's a permanent that's kind of crisis text line yeah. embedded <laughs> in our brains. That was yeah. like, hey, Chris, calm down. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Your flight's just canceled. You're still going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Well, every, by the way, your flight is canceled. No one's. By the way, no everyone. Going. <laughs> by true. the way, canceled. <laughs> <laughs> um, so talk to me about, let's say you do get someone who is in a really bad moment um, and you're getting not level 10, but you're getting level seven, level eight type messages where some, you can tell someone is really unhinged by something or even just with themselves. How do you help work them down? What are the tools that the crisis counselors have to do that? So let's first talk about what it means to be like, what, how do you even identify that? Yeah. We use what's called a ladder up risk assessment. So what we're really looking for is does someone have the ideation, the plan, the means, and the timing. So it's one thing to say, I can't take this anymore, or I'm really pissed. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kill my wife. It's another thing. And those are horrible, awful, angry, 
at your wits end um, feelings. Yeah, it's but obviously thing. there are things that people think before they do something like that. That's right. But the good news is they're reaching out to us to share them, which means yeah. they're questioning this suicide, homicidal thoughts. Yeah. And, um, and so the real question from us is um, not how serious are you, but how far along are you? How imminent is it? Um, mm. Is there a plan? Do they, do they have the means to carry out that plan? And are they going to do that um, immediately? And what we try and do is de-escalate um, the high risk situation. And so maybe convince you to, to wait a few days and to take that deep breath for a few days, go somewhere else, be with other people, or right. to uh, flush the pills down the toilet, or to go outside and go for a walk away from people, that kind of thing. Yeah. If we can de-escalate, that's really our goal. And most of the time we do de-escalate. In less than 1% of our conversations, though, we can't de-escalate. Someone's right. already swallowed the bottle of pills, or they've really got that plan. In those situations, we call 911 in the United States. In the UK, we call 999. Um, we, we do, we co we'll call for help because we believe your life matters. Yeah. And, um, and we think everything could change. Just tomorrow, everything yeah. could change. And so we want to make sure that you see tomorrow. Um, yeah. And so, um, and for everybody uh, who's watching, that is so true. You, you matter, you are important, whatever you're dealing with in whatever moment of crisis you're having, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it is worth waiting and fighting for. Um, and thank you guys, Nancy, for all the work that you're doing, helping, keeping people focused on the problem solving instead of the problem. You uh, sound like a good crisis counselor, Chris. I think you <laughs> You think I, I think would pass passed. the test? I wow. think you pass. I this is maybe. really why I no? got you here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, <laughs> my digital I think pitch. I you could be good at this. It's true. <laughs> Speaking but... of crisis counselors, how, yeah. how can people sign up to, if, they, if they're interested hearing what you're talking about, how, how could they oh. sign up to take the test? Great. Thank you. So you go to crisistextline.org, and you can get the numbers for how you get help in the mm -hmm. USA, Canada, UK, and Ireland. So that's good, um, how you can find help. And then you can also apply to become a crisis counselor in those um, countries. And you go through the application, a background check. Um, you have to be over the age of 18. And then it's about a 30 hour training. And like I said, if you pass, you can become a crisis counselor from anywhere. And I see you've got a bunch of fans um, from Brazil and um, we are planning on to expanding in Spanish and in Portuguese. Oh, fantastic. And French and Arabic in just the next two, two years. So we're going to be oh, in, that's we're great. Gonna cover 32% of the world. So um, we're going to need all of your fans all over the place. Well, I think they're ready and they're here. <laughs> yeah, the Brazilians, the Brazilians are, is it right to say they stand for you? The Brazilians <laughs> definitely stand for you. I, I, I think that's the, is that the Eminem song? Is that where that comes from? I think so. <laughs> Stan, such a weird yep. quote that now is such a part of our <laughs> language. <laughs> yep. Well, I stand in Brazil too, so there you go. Um, there you go. In this time with COVID, what what have you guys seen? Because you, you I, I was reading a lot about what you do, and it's so interesting. You guys use big data in a way that is actually constructive and helpful, as opposed to what we always hear about data being this mm -hmm. like big scary thing in our closet that's watching everything we do but you guys are using it for good which is so remarkable how what can you extrapolate from the stuff that you've been seeing from people um and and, and what what do you notice so we've been learning a lot we've been learning about a lot about the pain and mm -hmm. let's make sure we also we talk about the resilience and the thing the good things we've been learning about too so on the pain i mean we've been seeing a lot of anxiety uh, not just people who had anxiety before but people who have developed anxiety for the first time and are feeling just intense panic, um, yeah. freaked out, or some of the words that we're seeing about mm. the symptoms, about people they care about. That was really the first wave. The second wave we've seen has been the impact of the quarantines. So we have seen right. an impact in domestic, uh, an increase in domestic violence, an increase in sexual abuse, substance abuse, eating disorders, all of those things that were hard before just became a lot harder under lockdown um, away from your safety routines and maybe with yeah. people who are abusive and they're feeling yeah. pressure too. Um, yeah. And then the third wave of what we've been seeing has been grief as people lose people um, and mm -hmm. then job loss. So financial stress. And grief, grief can be more than just 
human life too. Um, Grief my therapist o- often, yeah, it, it talks, yeah. my therapist talks to me about that. When you lose the dream of something or the ability to do something, that is, that is also grief. Yep. Um, so we're I seeing that and we think these things are going to last a long time, but we are also yeah. seeing some um, good things about resilience. So right now everybody is really craving friends, um, family yeah. and pets. So friends, <laughs> The word, the word reconnect is, is trending. We're seeing a lot of the word reconnect. This is a great time to talk to a friend who yeah. maybe you had a falling out with or a friend you haven't seen yeah. since you were 10 years old, an old neighbor. Um, we're seeing family. I, I've just got to put in a plug. Moms are outpacing dads two to one right now. It's a big mom. Everybody wants their mommy. It's a big I moment mean, for moms. I understand. You, do you? Are you, a, are you a mama's boy a little bit? I, I think we all are somewhere deep in our hearts. <laughs> okay. And then, I love to hear that. And then, um, and then pets and the dogs are outpacing the cats. I'll put that. Everybody wants their furry friends right now. We all knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I'm a big, I'm a big on, dog person. So are you? Okay, nice. Oh, and yeah. then on, um, on the binging, this one's also interesting. Um, the five shows that we're seeing most, some of them make sense, like um, The Office and Parks and Rec, because that's like you want something that to, it's lighthearted. You know, it's fun. Lighthearted. Yeah. And then third is baking shows. Okay. Um, Because like comfort food, I feel like everyone's making a banana bread right now. And then fourth, (laughs) it is true. The fourth most popular thing we've seen that people have referenced is Tiger King. Happy to talk about. But the fifth one I think is so weird. People are binging Grey's Anatomy. And I don't know why anybody wants to watch a medical show right now. That makes no sense to me. I don't fully understand it either. Um, I I choose the opposite. Right. I, I, I have a hard time actually right now watching anything like overly dramatic. I kind of gravitate towards yeah, I want lighthearted. escapist. Yeah. Get me out of my head space. Totally. So interesting. What, um, totally. I, I want to ask you a couple questions because we got some questions from people who are watching this and I, I think there's some good ones in here. Um, what, uh, can, here's one. Can someone who experienced mental health issues still be an effective volunteer for a crisis line? Actually, they're some of our best. Um, and so why, why is that? Ex- lived experience really matters. Um, lived experience is incredible. You care, um, you know about resilience. You've been through this, you know what works and what doesn't. Um, yeah. We have a number of actually suicide attempt survivors who are paid full-time staff. Um, yeah. and, uh, and I love them. And I learned a lot about this. And I'll, I'm just gonna throw this out there. One of the things that has just kind of made me bananas about the mental health space is the obsession with PhDs and all these advanced degrees in the mental health space. I've never seen it. Um, so, uh, so much reverence for people with fancy degrees. <laughs> and um, what we have found at Crisis Tech Sign is it's actually just the, the feelers, people like you with this I Don't Mind um, program and account. We're um, just a bunch of feelers. Of there's, no, there's no PhDs feelers. here. <laughs> I know, but that's, that's the point. Is It's not clear to me that the PhDs who have like expertise in one narrow area and a fancy degree mm. and probably a lot of money because someone paid for them to go to school. Um, but like you, to write love on her arms, Jamie Tchaikovsky, who does yeah, to write love on her arms. A great organization. Jamie. Jamie's, Jamie's a feeler. And Jamie does amazing work because he's just a feeler and he's willing to talk about stuff. The empaths. Yeah. We, um, so yes, we believe that people who've been through this stuff, um, we love you. So um, you can come get help from us or oh, you can come great. give help with us. That's fantastic. And, uh, and I, I have a question for you about the service. If let's say I use it one afternoon and then the next day I'm having the same problem, is there a through line is there a, are you guys able to see that I've already reached out to you or is it like a clean slate the next day? So um, uh, we, well, it's all encrypted and no mm-hmm. one will see your number or any of that stuff. We do know that you've texted in before and what we'll keep track of is the resources that we gave you. So if gotcha. we gave you um, um, a website where you can find breathing gifts to help with your anxiety, um, right. You don't want us to give the exact same resource to you every time right. you text us, right? So we can Or if I said, you know what, that really didn't do it for me. I'm still not feeling great. It's already been noted that that has been sent to me. Yep. And so we can watch, we wow. can watch those things, but it's not ongoing therapy. So we're not keeping track. 
and we're not the the crisis counselor is going to be a brand new person and they're going to start all over again mm -hmm. with you and and also because the pain that you feel from one day to the next might be different yeah. um and um and so you might you know you might say different things and so we start fresh every time it's a new session and and do people tend to respond to that and get um sort of understand how that works pretty quickly once they're using the service they do. Every once in a while, we get people who depend on us too much and they sort of overuse us. And mm. we actually, well, I guess it's flattering. It's not healthy. <laughs> and so right. we, we want you, we want you to develop a, an in-life best friend. We want yeah. you to maybe see a doctor. And so yeah. if you use us too much and by too much, it's like a lot, it's like, you know, 20 times in a, in a week or on a weekend. Um, and right. then we'll say to you, Hey, we're concerned for you. Um, you're using us too much. This is not healthy. And so, um, uh, and so you would refer people to, you know, we would say, find a therapist you talk to or, a doctor or you should, that's right. Yeah. You, you, you need to pursue something else. That's right. I have to right. say, looking at these comments though, when you're having a bad day, do you just come on Instagram live? Because they all just tell you how much they love you and how beautiful you are. Like, <laughs> is, this both, is this just the best thing ever, Chris? I'm, I'm just looking through the comments to you. Uh, you so I, I don't, I'm not really I'm reading like them. I'm like jealous of all the hearts and they <laughs> love you and they think you're the best person ever. I, well, I as you know, so with the internet, OMG. you have to, you have yeah, to believe I mean, like, everything the internet says. Wow. You're it's all true fans. on the internet. <laughs> Thank you. Really yeah, nice I do. Fans. If There's I'm having good people. a bad day, can I just come on Instagram live and yeah. just read the comments to you? <laughs> I think <laughs> honestly, we should do this weekly. Um, just for a dose of positivity. Okay. <laughs> Sounds uh, good. Nancy, thank you it's like so much for talking to us. How much they love you. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> thank you for having me. Really. I feel like I should say that in all caps. Oh my gosh, I see Alex Frost. Alex Frost is in the comments. She actually said she loves me and not you. Sorry, Chris. But she's no, one see, of that's our good. Crisis counselors. Yeah. And so give, we have some give Nancy counselors some love. who are on here. They oh, are, that's they great. Are, our crisis counselors are really the best people. They're just the best people. They're that's amazing. Fantastic. I call them empathy MVPs. They're <laughs> empathy MVPs. Yeah. What, um, what, <laughs> and just one final thought from you. What can we expect from you guys coming up? I'm sure you guys always are planning and trying to figure out what else there is to do. Yeah. So we, um, uh, we're going to grow. Like I said, we're going to grow around the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we're going to be in more of these countries where you have some fans like Colombia and Brazil, and we're going to grow all around the world and um, help more people. Um, and um, we're always trying to build more things for our crisis counselors. Oh, there's the curly bee also. She loves me too. See, I'm getting some love here, Chris. I'm digging this. Um, I'm never leaving. Okay, so um, <laughs> um, we're going to build more things to make it even easier to be a crisis counselor and to feel good. Great. Great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, Nancy, thank you. Um, I hope you and your family stay safe and happy. And uh, anytime you need a boost of all caps love, you know who to call. Thank you. I might. I might. And if <laughs> your mom is not available, Chris, you can call me. You know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, thank you. And please, everybody, if you need help, 741-741 in the U.S. or Canada or go to crisistextline.org. But you are not alone. And like Chris said, you matter. You matter. That's right. Thank you, Nancy. Bye. That was great. How fun. Uh, I hope that was insightful and, and, and helpful and gave you guys all the information about the crisis text line and answered some of your questions. Um, we have a keyword with the crisis text line. So when you want to reach out, you can text IDM to 741741. That's short for I don't mind, IDM. You know, like, I don't mind, IDM. So you won't forget it because it's our name plus a very simple number, 741741. Um, they're there. I mean, she, she told us right here, they're there for so many more things than you could even imagine that they would have been there for. They're called the crisis text line. But don't think of a crisis as something that you got to be at a level 10 for. A crisis to you is a crisis to them. Um, great people. And also go check out their site, guys. Um, let's get some more volunteers. And I'll tell you what, next time I'm having a bad day, I know who I'm going to reach out to. Well, 
after my mom. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, and your mind matters. So talk about it. Bye, guys.